On the morning of January 26, 2020, the world stood still. A small headline, one that would soon become an unimaginable reality, sent shockwaves across the globe. Kobe Bryant, the legend, the icon, was gone. A tragic helicopter crash had taken his life and the lives of eight others. What began as an ordinary Sunday for millions turned into a day of grief, disbelief, and collective mourning. Social media lit up with confusion as fans, friends, and admirers scrambled to understand the unthinkable. Kobe Bryant, one of the most revered athletes in history, was no more. This wasn't just the loss of a basketball player, it was the loss of a father, a mentor, a hero to countless people who looked up to him both on and off the court. His legacy, now etched in tragedy, would forever mark the hearts of his family, his fans, and the world he so deeply inspired. This is the story of how one tragic event changed everything and the mark it left on all of us. It was a cold, gray Sunday morning, January 26, 2020. The kind of morning where the air feels heavier and the sky, blanketed in thick clouds, seems to press down on the landscape below. In the midst of this winter gloom, preparations were underway for what should have been an ordinary flight. At John Wayne Airport in Orange County, ARA Zobayan, a veteran helicopter pilot, stood at the Atlantic Aviation Terminal. The 50-year-old pilot was no stranger to challenging conditions, having earned his wings nearly two decades prior. He had flown countless hours and transported high-profile clients with precision and care. But today was different. The weather was not in their favor. Heavy clouds hung low over the city, accompanied by a haze that made visibility difficult. The Los Angeles basin was shrouded in a dense marine layer, a mix of fog and mist that would challenge any pilot. The forecast was ominous as large swaths of the region were deemed unsuitable for flying under normal conditions. Yet, there was a task at hand. Aira Zobayan worked for Island Express Helicopters, a small charter company with just six helicopters and a dedicated group of pilots. Island Express wasn't a huge operation, but it had carved out a niche market, ferrying high-profile clients across the skies of Southern California. For them, Kobe Bryant wasn't just another client, he was the client. Bryant's relationship with Island Express had been cultivated over the years, and he trusted them to handle his air travel with the same professionalism and dedication that defined his career on the basketball court. Kobe Bryant's reliance on helicopter travel was born out of necessity. The Southern California traffic was notoriously grueling, and in his retirement, Bryant had dedicated much of his time to family, especially his daughter Gianna, affectionately known as Gigi. The helicopter allowed him to save time, and more importantly, it gave him a way to balance his demanding schedule with being present in his daughter's lives. On this fateful morning, Kobe was scheduled to take his usual mode of transport for what had become a weekly tradition, flying to Gianna's basketball game. Team Mamba was heading to Camarillo, a city nestled in Ventura County, just under 90 miles northwest of their starting point. The destination was the Mamba Sports Academy, Kobe's creation, where Gianna and her teammates would face off in another youth basketball tournament. Kobe had poured himself into coaching this team, guiding Gianna and the other girls through the game he had mastered. The pride in his daughter's development was palpable, and this journey to the tournament was one they had made before, but the elements would prove to be a formidable challenge that morning. The flight plan was simple enough, a direct route over the Los Angeles basin, cutting across the Santa Monica Mountains, and then descending into Camarillo Airport. On a clear day, it would be a beautiful flight, but with the marine layer covering the region, visibility would be severely reduced. Zobayan, ever the professional, knew the risks. He had checked the weather and what he saw was concerning. 
The flight planning app revealed that much of the route was covered in clouds and haze conditions that called for caution. But this wasn't just any flight. Kobe Bryant was waiting. Island Express helicopters operated under visual flight rules, VFR, meaning that their pilots needed to maintain a clear view of the ground throughout the entire flight. In short, they were not licensed for instrument flight rules, IFR, which would allow them to navigate solely by relying on their instruments in poor visibility conditions. This distinction would become critical as the day unfolded. The plan was set, however. Zobayan, a trusted pilot with over 1,200 hours of experience in the Sikorsky S-76B, the helicopter model that Kobe had flown in many times before, was confident in his abilities. The Sikorsky S-76B was a twin-engine aircraft known for its safety and reliability. It was widely used in executive transport, often favored by high-profile clients for its comfort, stability, and safety record. Kobe, too, had grown accustomed to its features over the years. It was more than just a machine to him, it was part of the routine that allowed him to manage his demanding schedule and still be there for his family. As the clock ticked towards 9 a.m., the passengers began to arrive at the terminal. Kobe Bryant, accompanied by his 13-year-old daughter Gianna, had made this journey countless times before. Gianna, a rising basketball star in her own right, was dressed in her team's Mamba tracksuit, as were her teammates and their families. Among the group were Peyton Chester and her mother, Sarah Chester, Alyssa Altobelli and her parents, John and Carrie Altobelli, and Christina Mauser, who served as an assistant coach to Kobe at the Mamba Sports Academy. The group had originally planned to leave at 9.45 a.m., but the schedule was moved up to 9 a.m. to accommodate an early check-in. The team members were excited, chatting about the upcoming tournament. They were focused on the game ahead, unaware of the challenges the skies would bring that day. Kobe Bryant was known for his punctuality, but this morning he arrived slightly behind schedule. Despite the small delay, there was no cause for alarm. These delays were routine for the Bryant family's flights, and A.R.A. Zobayan knew how to make up time in the air. As soon as Kobe arrived, the pilot returned to the cockpit, and the passengers were ushered aboard the helicopter by Rick Webb, the owner of OC Helicopters, a company that often partnered with Island Express. The helicopter's cabin was spacious, outfitted in luxury with polished mahogany veneer and leather seats designed for the comfort of its passengers. The group settled into the cabin, with Kobe taking his preferred window seat on the left side, as he often did. Gianna and her teammates were seated comfortably, ready for the short flight that lay ahead. For the moment, everything felt routine, just another trip to a basketball game. But as the engines roared to life and the rotors began their rhythmic thumping, the challenges of the day would soon become apparent. The Sikorsky lifted off the ground at 9.06 a.m., with Zobayan at the controls. The familiar hum of the helicopter's turbines filled the cabin, and the passengers gazed out at the landscape below. On a clear day, the view would stretch for miles, offering breathtaking panoramas of the California coast and the sprawling city below. But this was no clear day. From the moment they ascended, visibility was limited. The ground quickly disappeared beneath a thick haze, leaving only a patchwork of gray skies and indistinct shapes in the distance. The landmarks of Los Angeles, the freeways, the parks, the buildings faded into the background, obscured by the low-hanging clouds that blanketed the region. Zobayan knew these skies well. He had flown this route many times before, navigating through the complex web of Southern California's airspace. But today, the weather was uncooperative. His eyes scanned the horizon, searching for the familiar sights that would guide him through the layers of clouds. Below, the passengers were blissfully unaware of the mounting challenges above. For Kobe Bryant, this was just another day in the air. He had traveled these skies so many times, using this private transportation to avoid the notorious Southern California traffic and make the most of his time. To him, the helicopter symbolized efficiency and control, allowing him to be both a global icon and a present father. Today was no different. His mind was on the game ahead, on his daughter Gianna, 
and on their shared love for the sport that had defined his life. As the helicopter flew north, the city stretched out below them, hidden beneath the haze. The sounds of the rotors thumping against the air filled the cabin, marking the beginning of what should have been a routine flight to yet another tournament. But as the minutes ticked by, the stakes grew higher. The weather, once a mere inconvenience, would soon become a formidable adversary, one that even the most experienced pilots would struggle to overcome. For ARA Zobayan, the morning's challenge had just begun. The aircraft sitting on the tarmac that morning was the Sikorsky S-76B, a twin-engine helicopter with a reputation for safety, reliability, and comfort. This wasn't just any helicopter. It was the kind of aircraft designed for high-profile clients, used frequently by executives, celebrities, and even royalty. Its sleek design and spacious interior made it ideal for short-haul flights, offering a level of luxury that few helicopters could match. Equipped with state-of-the-art avionics and twin engines, the Sikorsky S-76B was often described as one of the safest helicopters in the world. For Kobe Bryant, it was his trusted mode of transportation, a machine he had flown in numerous times. Inside, the cabin was fitted with polished mahogany veneer, two-tone leather seating, and gold-colored accents, a reflection of the premium experience Island Express helicopters provided for their most exclusive clients. The seating arrangement was designed for comfort and conversation, with four seats across, facing each other in pairs. The helicopter's design allowed for smooth flights, making it a preferred choice for Kobe, who valued both its efficiency and the privacy it offered. On the day of the crash, the helicopter was meticulously prepared for yet another flight with the Bryant family and their companions. However, as the morning unfolded, a series of minor delays began to add up. Kobe Bryant, known for his punctuality, arrived a bit later than expected. The original departure time had been set for 9.45 a.m., but Kobe's personal assistant had called the previous evening to request an earlier flight at 9.00 a.m. This rescheduling was meant to allow Kobe and the group to check in early for the basketball tournament, but the realities of coordinating such a high-profile flight meant the timing wasn't as smooth as planned. Kobe was running behind schedule, arriving at the airport just a few minutes later than the new departure time. The delay wasn't significant in the grand scheme of things, nothing out of the ordinary for a man balancing the demands of family, business, and personal commitments. But with the morning already mired in less than ideal weather conditions, every moment mattered. The passengers accompanying Kobe that day were close friends and family. Gianna Bryant, affectionately known as Gigi, was at the center of the group. At just 13 years old, she was already showing remarkable talent on the basketball court, following in her father's footsteps. Kobe had taken on the role of her coach and mentor, guiding her as she developed into a young athlete with enormous potential. It was no secret that Kobe envisioned Gianna continuing his basketball legacy, and their bond over the sport was unbreakable. This flight was supposed to be another routine trip to a basketball game, a moment for father and daughter to share in their passion for the game. Alongside them were Peyton Chester and her mother, Sarah Chester, who had become close friends with the Bryants through their daughter's shared involvement in Team Mamba. Peyton was one of Gianna's teammates, and the Chester family was a regular presence at these games and tournaments. They were part of the tight-knit basketball community that Kobe had cultivated through his Mamba Sports Academy, and their participation in these events was a source of joy and pride for both families. Alyssa Altobelli, another of Gianna's teammates, was also on board that day. Accompanying her were her parents, John and Carrie Altobelli. John was a well-respected figure in Southern California's sports world, serving as the head baseball coach at Orange Coast College. Like the Chester family, the Alto Bellies were deeply involved in the Team Mamba community, and their connection to Kobe and Gianna extended beyond the court. For them, this flight was another opportunity to support their daughter's growth as an athlete and to share in the excitement of competition. 
Also traveling with the group was Christina Mauser, an assistant coach who had been handpicked by Kobe to help guide Team Mamba. Mauser was a skilled basketball coach with a deep understanding of the game, and she had quickly earned Kobe's respect and trust. Her role on the team was instrumental in shaping the players, and she had developed a close working relationship with Kobe and the families of the team members. She had become a valued part of the Mamba Sports Academy, and her presence on that flight was a testament to her commitment to the team. As the passengers settled in, the weather loomed large in the minds of the crew. Ayara Zobayan, the pilot, had been closely monitoring the conditions since early that morning. The app he used for flight planning had painted a concerning picture of thick clouds and low visibility across much of the Los Angeles area. The region was covered by a marine layer, a dense fog that often rolled in from the Pacific Ocean, making flying conditions unpredictable. For a pilot operating under visual flight rules, VFR, this was far from ideal. Zobayan, however, was no stranger to challenging weather. He had been flying helicopters since 2001 and had logged over 8,000 flight hours by the time of the accident. He was well respected within the aviation community, and his experience made him a trusted pilot for high-profile clients like Kobe Bryant. He had flown the Bryants and their companions on numerous occasions, and Kobe had developed a sense of confidence in his abilities. But on this particular morning, the weather added an extra layer of complexity to an otherwise routine flight. The company Zobayan worked for, Island Express Helicopters, was licensed to operate only under VFR, meaning that their flights depended on clear visibility of the ground. If the weather conditions worsened and the pilot could no longer see the ground or other landmarks, they would be forced to land or cancel the flight. But for Kobe, who had a tournament to attend and a team to coach, canceling was not an ideal option. Zobayan reviewed the flight plan once again. The direct route to Camarillo, which would have taken the helicopter over the Santa Monica Mountains and along the coast, was deemed too risky due to the weather. The alternative was an inland route that would take them farther east, avoiding the worst of the coastal fog, but adding time to the flight. As he weighed the options, Zobayan considered the pressure to keep the schedule and the safety of the passengers. He decided to proceed with the inland route, which offered a higher chance of success given the conditions. However, the risk remained. The weather could still deteriorate, and if visibility worsened during the flight, Zobayan would have to make quick decisions to ensure the safety of everyone on board. Skipping the formal risk assessment process, a step that would have delayed the flight further, he submitted the flight plan and prepared for takeoff. The passengers, unaware of the complexity of the pilot's decision-making process, remained focused on the tournament ahead. Team Mamba was ready. Dressed in their black Nike tracksuits emblazoned with the Mamba Sports Academy logo, they had made this journey before, and despite the slight delays and gloomy weather, the excitement for the day's events remained palpable. As the helicopter lifted off the ground, no one could have predicted the tragic turn that the flight would take. The weather, which had seemed a minor inconvenience at the start, would soon prove to be a formidable and fatal challenge. At exactly 9.06 a.m., the Sikorsky S-76B lifted off from John Wayne Airport. Inside the helicopter, there was a palpable sense of excitement, tempered only slightly by the cold, gray skies that hung over Southern California that morning. For the passengers, the anticipation of the basketball tournament at the Mamba Sports Academy was at the forefront of their minds. Kobe Bryant sat near the window, as he often did, with his daughter Gianna beside him. The other passengers, Gianna's teammates, Peyton Chester, Alyssa Altobelli, and their families chatted quietly, immersed in the routine of travel, unaware that this flight would be anything but ordinary. The roar of the helicopter's engines masked any concerns that might have arisen about the weather. After all, flying with Island Express had become a familiar ritual for Kobe, and it was hard to imagine that today would be any different. For Zobayan, this flight was just another task, one he had performed countless times before. Yet, as the helicopter gained altitude and began its journey northward, the pilot's focus sharpened. He knew that visibility would be an issue and that careful navigation would be key. 
The flight began smoothly, the Sikorsky slicing through the morning air as it left Orange County behind. The city of Los Angeles sprawled out below, though much of it was obscured by the dense marine layer that covered the region. The passengers gazed out of the windows, taking in what they could of the view but much of it was lost to the thick clouds that pressed down on the city. On a clear day, the flight would have provided stunning panoramas of the Southern California landscape, the rolling hills, the towering downtown skyline, the Pacific Ocean shimmering in the distance. But today, those views were hidden behind a veil of gray. As the helicopter moved north, the landmarks of Los Angeles began to appear, emerging from the haze like islands in a foggy sea. First came the familiar shape of Dodger Stadium, perched high above the city. The iconic baseball park stood out against the urban sprawl, a brief moment of clarity in an otherwise murky skyline. The passengers could see the stadium below them as the helicopter passed over it, the field looking small and distant from their vantage point in the sky. Next came the LA River, a winding concrete channel that cut through the heart of the city. The river, a mix of concrete and flowing water, was another familiar sight for anyone who had spent time in Los Angeles. From the air, it snaked its way through the city, its shimmering surface barely visible beneath the layers of fog and mist that clung to the ground. The helicopter followed the river northward, tracing its path as it headed towards the hills that marked the edge of the sprawling metropolis. As the Sikorsky approached the Santa Monica Mountains, the landscape began to change. The flat expanse of the city gave way to rolling hills, their green peaks hidden beneath a thick blanket of clouds. The helicopter was now entering more challenging terrain, where visibility would become even more critical. The passengers, still unaware of the difficulties ahead, remained focused on the day's events, the tournament, the excitement of competition, the chance for Gianna and her teammates to prove themselves on the court. But for Zobayan, the mood in the cockpit was far more tense. As the helicopter climbed higher into the Santa Monica Mountains, the pilot knew he was entering a dangerous zone. The thick clouds that blanketed the hills made visual navigation nearly impossible, and he had to rely on his instruments to guide him through the dense fog. The helicopter's altimeter and other avionics provided him with critical data about their altitude and direction. But without a clear view of the ground, flying became significantly more difficult. This is where the concept of Instrument Meteorological Conditions, or IMC, comes into play. IMC refers to situations where pilots are unable to see the ground or other visual landmarks due to poor weather conditions, whether it be fog, clouds, rain, or a combination of factors. In such conditions, pilots must rely solely on their instruments to navigate, rather than using visual cues from the environment. For helicopter pilots, who often operate under visual flight rules, VFR, entering IMC can be particularly dangerous, as their training and licensing may not prepare them for these challenging conditions. IMC has been the cause of numerous aviation accidents over the years, including the tragic crash that claimed the life of John F. Kennedy Jr. in 1999. In Kennedy's case, he was flying a small aircraft over the Atlantic Ocean when he became disoriented in the fog unable to distinguish the horizon from the sea. Disorientation in IMC is a known phenomenon, where a pilot can lose track of their position relative to the ground, leading to catastrophic results. Kennedy's accident served as a stark reminder of the dangers of flying in poor weather, and it underscored the importance of proper training and preparation for such conditions. For ARA Zobayan, the challenge was clear. He had to navigate through the Santa Monica Mountains in near-zero visibility, relying on his instruments and experience to keep the helicopter on course. But the stakes were rising. As they approached the Burbank airspace, where the helicopter would need clearance to pass through, visibility conditions were worsening. The fog was thickening, and the once familiar landmarks were becoming harder to distinguish. At 9.20 a.m., Zobayan made a critical decision. He radioed the Burbank Airport Control Tower, requesting permission to enter their airspace. The response was immediate. Due to the low visibility and the fact that a SkyWest jet was about to land, 
they were not cleared to proceed. For the next 11 minutes, Zobayan circled over the Glendale area, waiting for permission to continue. The helicopter maintained an altitude of just 400 feet, flying low over the residential neighborhoods of Glendale as it waited for clearance. The passengers inside the helicopter likely had little sense of the complexity of the situation unfolding around them. For them, the delay was a minor inconvenience, perhaps adding a few minutes to their journey, but nothing more. They were likely focused on the tournament ahead, the excitement of the upcoming game. But for Zobayan, those 11 minutes were critical. Every moment spent circling in the worsening weather increased the risks, and the fog that hung over the mountains only deepened the challenge of navigating safely. At 9.32 a.m., Zobayan finally received the clearance he had been waiting for. The control tower granted him permission to enter Burbank airspace under special visual flight rules, Phi FR. This clearance allowed the helicopter to proceed despite the poor weather conditions, but it came with significant risks. Flying under special VFR meant that the helicopter would have to maintain visual contact with the ground, even though visibility was severely limited. It was a calculated risk, one that Zobayan believed he could manage given his experience and knowledge of the area. With clearance granted, the helicopter continued its journey heading northwest over the San Fernando Valley, but the weather continued to deteriorate. As they approached the hills of Calabasas, the thick fog that had plagued them from the start of the flight became even more dense. The peaks of the Santa Monica Mountains were completely obscured by clouds, and the helicopter was flying blind, with no visual cues to guide them. In these conditions, the risks of IMC became even more pronounced. Without a clear view of the ground, Zobayan had to rely entirely on his instruments to keep the helicopter on course. But even the most experienced pilots can struggle struggle in IMC, as the lack of visual reference points can lead to disorientation and confusion. Zobayane, flying manually, had to constantly adjust the helicopter's altitude and direction to avoid the peaks of the mountains, all while trying to maintain control in the worsening weather. As the minutes ticked by, the situation grew more perilous. The helicopter was now flying at 150 miles per hour, racing through the fog-covered mountains with little visibility. Zobayan's focus remained sharp, but the margin for error was razor thin. He knew that one wrong move could lead to disaster, but he pressed on, determined to complete the flight and get the passengers to their destination. What Zobayan didn't know was that he was flying into a trap. The thick clouds that had hung over the mountains since the start of the flight were now closing in around him, leaving him with no clear path forward. The helicopter was entering what pilots refer to as a trap zone, an area where the weather conditions make it nearly impossible to navigate safely. As they approached the Calabasas Pass, Zobayan was faced with a critical decision, attempt to climb through the clouds in search of clearer skies or turn back and abort the flight. At 9.44 a.m., Zobayan made his fateful decision. He began to climb, pushing the helicopter higher into the clouds, hoping to find a break in the weather that would allow him to regain visibility. But as the helicopter climbed, the situation spiraled out of control. Zobayan, disoriented by the lack of visual cues, began to lose track of the helicopter's position. The aircraft started to bank to the left, and despite his efforts to correct the course, the helicopter continued to tilt. What happened next would become the subject of intense investigation and speculation. But one thing was certain. In those final moments, the flight had gone from hope to disaster. After 11 long minutes of circling over Glendale, awaiting clearance from Burbank Airport's control tower, ARA Zobayan finally received permission to proceed. At 9.32 a.m., the tower granted him special visual flight rules, VFR clearance. This clearance was not without risks. Under special VFR, pilots are allowed to fly through controlled airspace in weather conditions that do not meet the standard VFR requirements as long as they maintain visual contact with the ground. It was a calculated risk that many pilots had taken before. Zobayan, seasoned and experienced, felt confident enough to proceed. The helicopter carrying its nine passengers resumed its northward path over the San Fernando Valley. But as they neared Calabasas, the weather took a darker turn. The thick clouds that had already made visibility difficult 
were closing in, pressing lower against the mountainous terrain. The airspace ahead was uncontrolled, meaning there would be no help from air traffic control. Zobayan was on his own now, navigating the treacherous conditions with only his experience and instruments to guide him. The flight path took them towards the southwestern corner of the San Fernando Valley, a zone that presented a unique challenge. The Santa Monica Mountains loomed ahead, their peaks shrouded in fog and clouds that hugged the earth. Zobayan, recognizing the growing danger, maintained a low altitude to avoid the worst of the weather, flying at around 1,500 feet. His plan was simple, follow the contours of the land, staying low, and attempt to clear the peaks by navigating through the Calabasas Pass. On clearer days, the pass offered a relatively safe route through the mountains, providing a gap in the terrain that allowed helicopters to pass through safely. But this was no ordinary day. As the helicopter neared the pass, the weather conditions worsened. The clouds thickened and the fog became so dense that even Zobayan, with his deep familiarity with the region, began to lose sight of the ground. It was a critical moment in the flight, one that demanded caution, precision, and perhaps reconsideration of the journey altogether. Zobayan, aware of the risks of IMC, instrument meteorological conditions, faced a critical decision. He could either turn back, find a safer route, or attempt to climb above the clouds where he hoped the skies would clear. But time was running out. The passengers were expecting to arrive at the tournament soon, and with each passing minute, the pressure to complete the flight mounted. The helicopter's flight path took it dangerously close to the rising hills of Calabasas, where the landscape shifted dramatically from urban sprawl to rugged forested terrain. For Zobayan, the stakes were clear. He needed to gain altitude to safely cross over the mountains. At 9.44 a.m., he made the fateful decision to climb. The helicopter began to ascend, rising at a rate of 1,000 feet per minute in an attempt to break through the thick cloud layer. As the Sikorsky climbed, Zobayan's anxiety likely grew. Without visual references to the ground or sky, he was flying blind, relying solely on his instruments. But flying in IMC is notoriously disorienting, even for experienced pilots. The mind plays tricks when there are no external cues to anchor a pilot's perception. Zobayan, struggling to regain control of the situation, decided not to engage the helicopter's autopilot, a feature that could have stabilized the aircraft. Instead, he flew manually, trusting in his ability to navigate the climb safely. It was a critical error one that would soon lead to tragedy. Inside the helicopter, the passengers likely had no idea of the unfolding danger. From their perspective, it was simply another flight through the clouds. Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna might have been talking quietly about the upcoming game, their minds focused on basketball and the day ahead. The others, too, were likely unaware of just how treacherous the conditions had become. But for Zobayan, the climb was becoming increasingly difficult. At some point during the ascent, he lost his spatial awareness, a dangerous phenomenon known as spatial disorientation. With no clear view of the horizon or the ground, his mind began to misinterpret the helicopter's movements. Pilots in such conditions can become confused, mistaking a bank or a turn for level flight. And that's exactly what happened. The helicopter, unbeknownst to Zobayan, was banking to the left. Without the autopilot to correct the flight path, the bank steepened and the helicopter began to veer off course. Zobayan, in his disoriented state, likely didn't realize the extent of the leftward tilt. The instruments in front of him, the altimeter, the attitude indicator, the heading indicator were his only lifelines in this moment, but interpreting those readings while in a state of confusion can be incredibly difficult. At 9.45 a.m., the situation reached its breaking point. Zobayan radioed into the SoCal approach, reporting that he was climbing to 4,000 feet to escape the clouds. It would be the last communication from the helicopter. On the ground, two hikers in the hills of Calabasas witnessed the helicopter's final moments. They described seeing a white helicopter emerge from the low clouds, flying at an unusually low altitude. For a brief moment, it appeared as though the aircraft was flying parallel to the hills, but then 
Without warning, it disappeared back into the fog. The hikers heard a loud, thunderous sound, the unmistakable noise of an aircraft in distress, followed by a deafening crash. At that moment, the Sikorsky S-76B, with all nine passengers on board, crashed into the hillside at an altitude of 1,085 feet. The impact was catastrophic. The helicopter, traveling at high speed, collided with the rugged terrain, its tail and rotor breaking off on impact. The fuselage tumbled down the hillside, scattering debris across the rugged landscape before erupting into flames. A massive plume of black smoke rose from the wreckage, visible for miles around. The crash site, located near Las Virgenes Road and Willow Glen Street, was remote making it difficult for first responders to reach. By the time emergency crews arrived, it was clear that there were no survivors. The wreckage burned intensely, fueled by the aircraft's fuel tanks, and it became immediately apparent that this was a tragedy of unimaginable proportions. At OC helicopters back at the terminal, no one yet knew what had transpired. It wasn't until minutes later that panic began to set in. Patty Taylor, the operations manager, began making calls, trying to track the helicopter's progress. When she was unable to reach Zobayan and flight tracking data stopped at 9.45 a.m., she realized something had gone terribly wrong. A helicopter was dispatched to the last known location of the flight, but by the time they arrived, it was too late. Eyewitnesses to the crash reported seeing the helicopter vanish into the clouds, only to hear the deafening sound of impact moments later. One hiker described the chilling feeling of seeing the helicopter disappear, knowing something was wrong but unable to do anything. Another described the sound of the crash as like a bomb going off, a terrifying moment that would haunt those who witnessed it. For A. Zobayan, those final moments were likely filled with frantic attempts to regain control of the helicopter. But disoriented and flying manually, the situation had spiraled beyond recovery. His decision to ascend into the clouds without engaging the autopilot sealed the fate of everyone on board. By 9.48 a.m., the news began to spread. Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others had perished in a helicopter crash in the hills of Calabasas. The world would soon be engulfed in mourning as the details of the tragedy emerged. But in those final moments, high above the hills, the passengers were lost to a tragedy that could not be undone. The final moments of the flight were marked by confusion, disorientation, and ultimately, disaster. For those on the ground who saw the helicopter's last flight, it was a haunting reminder of how quickly things can go wrong even for the most experienced pilots. In the end, the weather, the decisions made in the cockpit, and the treacherous conditions of the Calabasas Hills conspired to bring about the tragic end of one of the most beloved figures in the world of sports at 9.45 a.m., the Sikorsky S-76B slammed into a hillside in Calabasas, its tail and rotors shearing off upon impact. The fuselage tumbled down the slope, finally coming to rest in a smoldering heap before bursting into flames. A devastating scene unfolded as the fiery wreckage was scattered across the rugged terrain, thick black smoke billowing into the air. Nearby mountain bikers, who had been enjoying a quiet morning on the trails, were the first to witness the crash. They had seen the helicopter appear suddenly out of the fog, flying dangerously low before it vanished into the clouds again. Moments later, they heard the deafening sound of the crash. Rushing towards the wreckage, the bikers quickly realized the scale of the disaster. Flames engulfed the remains of the helicopter, and there was no sign of life. Back at OC Helicopters, uncertainty gripped the office. Patty Taylor, the operations manager, tried to contact the helicopter to no avail. The flight tracking software had lost all signals from the aircraft at 9.45 a.m., causing immediate concern. Limo drivers, waiting at Camarillo Airport for Kobe and his group, reported that the helicopter had not yet landed. As panic set in, 
Calls were made and a search was launched. Tragically, within minutes, firefighters arrived at the crash site, confirming what the rescuers had feared there were no survivors. At 12.05 p.m., news broke to the public. Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna had died in a helicopter crash. The news spread like wildfire across social media, leading to a flood of speculation and shock. Initial reports were vague with some outlets even erroneously reporting the survival of other passengers. But as the facts were confirmed, a collective wave of grief and disbelief swept the globe. A beloved sports legend, along with eight others, had been tragically lost. In the immediate aftermath, questions began to arise about how such a catastrophe could have occurred. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, launched a detailed investigation combing through the wreckage and piecing together the final moments of the flight. Initial speculation centered on the weather, with many pointing to the dense fog and low visibility as contributing factors. Some reports even circulated false claims that the helicopter had suffered mechanical failure. However, the NTSB investigation concluded that the crash was caused by the pilot's decision to continue flying in dangerous weather conditions. It was determined that ARA Zobayan had flown into instrument meteorological conditions. IMC, losing visual contact with the ground and becoming disoriented. Crucially, the report found that Zobayan had failed to engage the helicopter's autopilot, which could have helped stabilize the aircraft and prevent the crash. Vanessa Bryant, along with the families of the other victims, filed wrongful death lawsuits against Island Express Helicopters, accusing the company of negligence in allowing the flight to proceed under such conditions. The lawsuits alleged that Island Express had failed to properly assess the weather risks and that Zobayan's decision-making had been fatally flawed. The controversy surrounding the crash raised important questions about flight safety protocols and the responsibility of both pilots and aviation companies. Many experts argued that had Zobayan followed standard procedures or aborted the flight, the tragedy could have been avoided. The lawsuits, still ongoing, aimed to hold those responsible accountable for the preventable loss of nine lives. The news of Kobe Bryant's death reverberated around the world. Fans, athletes, and celebrities alike expressed their grief and shock. U.S. President Donald Trump, actress Reese Witherspoon, NBA Hall of Famers Bill Russell and Larry Bird, and fellow athletes like LeBron James and Michael Jordan shared emotional tributes reflecting on Kobe's impact not only as a player but as a human being. Social media was flooded with heartfelt messages from across the globe, memorializing Kobe's legacy as an athlete, mentor, and father. In the days that followed, tributes poured in from sports teams, organizations, and fans. The Los Angeles Lakers, the team Kobe had played for his entire career, honored him with a powerful ceremony at the Staples Center. NBA games around the country held moments of silence, while athletes wore special jerseys and sneakers emblazoned with Kobe's iconic numbers, 8 and 24. Murals, candles, and flowers adorned makeshift memorials in Los Angeles and beyond. As millions mourned the loss of a basketball giant who had transcended the sport, Kobe Bryant's legacy endures. He was more than just an athlete. He was a mentor to younger players, a storyteller through his post-basketball endeavors, and most importantly, a dedicated father to his four daughters. His influence continues to inspire generations of athletes and fans alike, reminding the world of his tireless work ethic, his Mamba mentality, and his unwavering dedication to excellence. The tragedy that claimed the lives of Kobe Bryant, Gianna, and seven others left an indelible mark on the world. For Vanessa Bryant and the families of the victims, the pain of that day will never fade. Their loss is a stark reminder of how fragile life can be and how one tragic decision can forever alter the course of so many lives. The investigation into the crash made it clear this tragedy could have been avoided had the proper protocols been followed had caution been prioritized over convenience, the world might still have Kobe Bryant today. The lawsuits filed in the wake of the crash seek to bring justice for the victims
victims and ensure that such a preventable tragedy never happens again. Kobe Bryant's impact on the world was undeniable. He was a champion, not only on the basketball court, but in life. His legacy will live on through the countless lives he touched, the stories he shared, and the inspiration he continues to provide. As we remember his life and mourn his loss, we are reminded that even in death, Kobe's influence will endure forever a legend, forever a father, and forever missed.